Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers, thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you the metallic thread drawer as I promised. So inside we have the beautiful metallic threads inside there. Um, I've got a new setup for my camera. Um, I'm hoping that my tripod will be able to stay like this. So I've got a bit of a dark shaded area here, um, but hopefully it's enough for you to be able to see what I'm doing and clear enough. Um, and as I said, hopefully my tripod can stay where it is. I'm not going to be banging my head on it or anything silly um, and it can stay here, which is fabulous. So on to my product project. As I said, it's exactly the same as the um, Baker's twine drawers that I made previously, um, except obviously this time we just have one whole big drawer as opposed to the two smaller ones. And you could always do it whichever way it suits. Um, because it's a bit longer, it does tend to bow when you pull it. I find that if you just hold the edges there, it does pull quite easily. But if you hold this, you're basically squeezing the back of the drawer, um, which is stopping it from coming out. So you just squeeze in there, so you're stopping it. Um, but as again, as I said, it, it is just a little case of keeping them tidy um, and just, you know, mine are now sat nicely in front of my ribbon rack um, and they're nice and tidy and I know where they are and you know they're not rolling around and becoming loose and unmanageable so I'm going to show you how to make it it's really really simple I'm going with the Woodwards um, DS sorry Wood Textures DSP this time because I know that it is being carried over so at least I know that you'll be able to get hold of this product um, and I'm simply using Crumb Cake DSP Crumb Cake cardstock so I'm going to make up the drawer first and so you simply need a sheet of cardstock that is eight inches by five and a half. That's 14 and a half by 21 centimeters. And we're simply gonna score at one and a half inches on all four sides. And in centimeters, that is four centimeters. Just on all the four sides there, spin it round one and a half. And I just realized that I've not brought my bone folder over. Thankfully, it's not a million miles away. So, as we do with all of our projects, we're going to fold uh, and burnish those score lines. I don't know why I have so much trouble saying that. Honestly, fold and burnish score lines. I always get it mixed up. Um, and so, what we're going to do now is make up our little tabs. So, again, you can do either this way or cut down that way and make your tabs it doesn't really matter these will obviously be going into the sides of the drawer so just literally cut the wedges of all four just in the corner there and this would be a nice project to do over the weekend because there's not too much thinking involved and you can just get it done dead quick so there's the front of our drawer I'm now going to pop my piece of DSP on the front and for once it is measured correctly. So this is four and three quarters by one and a quarter inches, which is 12 and a half by three and a half centimetres. And then just stick in some snail oh, onto the front and then I'm just going to pop it on. Now don't forget if you've got a pattern or a design that you want going a particular way just make sure you've cut it and you're sticking it the correct way. And then all we're going to do now is pop some adhesive and I'm still using my fuse. Still got a load left. So just pop some adhesive on those tabs. And I've just realised that I've actually left my tumble dry going downstairs. I can't believe I've still got my tumble dry going this time of year. But the weather is just so bad, it just constantly keeps raining and my son needs work clothes so I'm going to have to put the dryer on. I hate it. So those are my tabs in place. They do overlap slightly um, but it really doesn't matter, it's not a problem. And then you need your one eighth of an inch circle punch and you can either measure this or eyeball it, it doesn't really matter. Punch a hole through the top there and then we're going to add some thread. Now if you recall we do it exactly the same way as we did these ones. So I actually sadly have used the metallic thread 
for this one. Um, I'm hoping you can see it. Copper trim, sorry, not metallic thread. The copper trim for this one. Um, and sadly, that was the very last bit that I had left. So I'm going to quickly swap over and you're going to pretend that I've just put the thread in this one. Um, and all I basically did was I just threaded, folded two ends over. So let me just grab the closest ribbon I have, which is this black one. So all I did was fold it over like this, give myself a good length of it, fed both of the ends through the hole, tied a knot and pulled it through and then secured it with some good old sellotape. So that's all you need to do for the drawer. Hey presto, look how quickly I did that. I probably could have done with a little bit longer here, but it's okay. So there's my drawer made up. So I now simply just need to make up my outer or my box or whichever way you want to describe it. And so for this we need a sheet of DSP that is eight and one eighth by six and three quarters and that is 18 by 21 and a half centimetres. So on this one with your eight inch across the top so that would be your 21 and a half centimetres we're going to score on one and a half inches, rotate it completely and do one and a half inches which obviously is four centimetres. Do the same. Then turn it back this way so those score lines are now horizontal and we are going to score at two and five eighths. So one, two, three, four, five. Rotate and do the same. Now I do apologise, I haven't written down what that is in centimetres but I will check and I will let you know. It will be on my blog anyway. So those are the two pieces that I've scored there. Fold and burnish your score lines. And then, so that's it, very simple. And then obviously we're going to cut our tabs, which are actually these little pieces in the corner here. So simply cut down and then cut your little wedges out. And likewise on the other side. And then we're going to pop some DSP onto this one as well. So let's have all of that out. So our DSP, we have a piece for the top of the box and this is four and three quarters by two and a quarter and that's 12 and a half by six centimetres. Just make sure I've got the right side but I don't know if I have or not. Yes, this is the right side so this is the wrong side. This snail's not far off running out. That would be just my luck, wouldn't it? So, I'll just stick that one on the top. And I've got some little ridges here where I actually trimmed the paper. So I'm just going to use my bone folder just to smooth those raised edges. Lovely. And then, obviously, on that same piece here, we need to put our two side panels. And they are... Oh, my goodness, I've forgotten which one. Oh dear, it's clearly not my day, is it? Yes, I think that's the correct way. Um, and so the side panels are two and a quarter by one and a quarter inches, and that is six and a half by three and a half centimetres. Oh my goodness. I think it's the rain that's affected my brain. At least that's the excuse I'm going to go with anyway. Oh dear. And when you pop your panels on, Another way of lining them up is to line these parts up here. So line your edges up. And then we're going to flip it over so we've got the inside showing. And we're going to put adhesive on the lid where the DSP is. Come on, fuse. Put it on both of these inside bits and also on the inside of our tabs which I know is contrary to what you'd normally do, but the reason for that is if you remember from the um, Baker's Twine box, we're gonna pull this up, let's fold that out, so that this edge lines up in this gap. So it just gives it that nice 90 degree angle, that nice edge. 
and that obviously then goes on the outside so we'll do the same on this side so holding this piece straight and it tucked into that edge we're just going to fold that tab on so that's how that looks and then last but not least the top goes on and this is a case of again lining those two creases up and just making sure everything's level and give it a little press and likewise this side just make sure that edge is tucked in because then when we do it like this you see you can't see the tab at all here and you've got a nice smooth side inside for your drawer to slide into and there it is it does gape a little bit because of the, the card um, but there you have it a beautiful little drawer that fits just inside when it's straight fits just inside and will house my baker's twine and it's in current colours and paper as well so at least it will last another year now hope you found that fun and easy to make um, these would be ideal as well for maybe um, if you've got a joiner or, or a handyman that likes um, you know using his hands using wood etc you could maybe fill this with some chocolates or treats or little tools or something um, it's also a great little gift I think, um, practical and useful. So I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, all of the dimensions will be on my blog, including that score line that I missed off with the centimetres. Do apologise. Um, in fact, I've just realised, and I have written it down, and it's seven centimetres. So on the main box, which is 21 and a half by 18, on the 18 centimetres, you score at seven, and on the 21 and a half centimetres, you score at four. And then you rotate it a full 180 and score the same again. It will be on my blog. I do apologise. I can't read my own writing. Hope you all have a great day and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.